Hmm. Fine. What would you rather do as a scene study? I'm glad you asked. I took the liberty of adapting a Star Trek fan fiction novella I wrote when I was 10 into a one act play. And you think it's better than Tennessee Williams? Why don't we leave that for future generations to decide? Where no Sheldon has gone before. It's the story of a young boy who is transported from the ignorant backwoods of East Texas to the 23rd century, where his genius is not only appreciated, but celebrated. K-M-N. <laughs> In this pivotal scene, Sheldon's mother, played by you, argues with an emissary of the United Federation of Planets, Mr. Spock, the role I will bring to life. Okay, that's fine, but let's try and get you out of your comfort zone. Why would we want to do that? It's called the comfort zone for a reason. Okay, the whole point of this is to loosen you up a little, so I'm thinking you'll play the role of your mother and I will bring life to Mr. Spock. I'm sorry, you'll be Spock? It's only logical. <laughs> Very well. <clears throat> I'll set the scene. All right. East Texas, a warm summer night. A woman, Mary, stands on a porch. In the distance, we hear a lonesome train whistle. Woo, woo! The droning buzz of cicadas. A coyote howls at the moon, frightening sensitive young boys everywhere. Ow, ow, ow! Out in the woods, an owl screeches. Okay, okay, we get it. You set the scene. Who? <laughs> All right, just read your mother's line. Shelly? Shelly? How many times have I told you not to leave your sciencey stuff out on the porch? Goodness. I'll never understand that boy. But then again, I'm a religious nut, and my mind is closed to so many things. <laughs> Spock to Enterprise, transport successful. Glory be to heaven! Some sort of creature just manifested out of thin air. George, put down that Pepsi can full of bourbon that ain't fooling no one and get your shotgun. <laughs> Greetings, Mary Cooper. I am Spock. I'm sorry, I just don't buy it. Just keep going. Oh, my! Your sudden appearance startles me. We have been monitoring your son, Sheldon, from the 23rd century, and we have determined that he is now ready to join us. His unique genius is our best hope for bringing peace to a vast and troubled galaxy. I understand. <laughs> Oh, Shelly, a man's here to take you away to the future. Be sure to pack clean underwear. Okay, okay, let's try that last line again, and this time maybe try choking up a little. Why? Well, you're losing your son. Yes, but he's going to a better place where he won't get beat up so much. All right, come on, just try it my way. Pretend you're sad to see him go. I'm going to lead you in. <clears throat> His unique genius is our best hope for bringing peace to a vast and troubled galaxy. That's your cue. I'm sorry, I just love that line. <laughs> Even the way you do it. All right, come on, come on, put some real emotion to it. Blah, 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 vast and troubled galaxy, go. <laughs> oh, Shelly, a man's here to take you away to the future. <gasps> Be sure to pack clean underwear. That's good, that's good, that's good. Mommy, why are you crying? Well, cause I'm gonna miss you, Shelly Bean. Even though you creep the bejesus out of me. Okay, I guess we're improvising now. Well, I'm sorry, it's not my fault. I'm just incredibly smart and everyone around here is dumber than a bag of rocks. <laughs> oh, now don't you start crying. You get in that spaceship. Mommy's late for Indian bingo. <laughs> Mrs. Cooper, hey, it's Penny. Yeah, I think I broke your son. <laughs> Hold on, talk to your mother. <laughs> Mommy, I love you. <laughs> don't let Spock take me to the future. <laughs>